Welcome to this lecture on biological sex determination. In this lecture, we'll go through two important concepts. Firstly, how the genital tracts differentiate to be more uh, a phenotype male sex or phenotype female sex. And we'll also look at the differentiation of the external genitalia. So this is a continuation of the embryology lecture we did on the genitourinary tract. So let's firstly start with this particular image here. So what we've done is basically we've done a frontal cut through the embryo. We've removed the anterior front wall and we're looking deep into the abdomen of the fetus. Up here would be the developing uh, diaphragm just so you can get your bearings and then we're moving down the abdominal cavity. Right in the midline here you would have the vertebral body starting to develop and for today, the first important structure to get your landmark is these two kind of circular uh, bits of tissue, which are going to be the gonads. So at this point, they're undifferentiated gonads. So there's a cluster of mesochymal or mesodermal uh, tissue. Outside each one of these in the lateral aspect is this green duct system, which we call the mesonephritic duct, or today we'll call it the Wolfian duct. One on each side, just like the gonad, one on each side. Outside that further is the paromesonephritic duct, which is also another ductal system important for today. And we're going to call this one particular the malarian duct. Now, as you can see, these ducts are all coming, to, to coming down and emptying into this red structure, which we're going to call the urogenital sinus. So this sinus was once part of the cloaca, which was this kind of confluence of both the urinary system and the gastrointestinal system, but it's been separated by a septum. So this is now just called the urogenital sinus, which is important for today's development. Now, at four weeks, starting with the gonads, um, it's still undifferentiated, so the sex has not been determined. Now, what has to kind of happen is the germal cells, so these are cells that are either going to become spermatogonia, produce sperm, or oogonia, produce eggs, has to migrate into these blocks of tissues. So the, the cells that do that are what we call the primordial germ cells. So they're going to go into this group of tissues at about four weeks. They're coming from the yolk sac. So they're going to migrate and then integrate into that particular group of connective tissue or somatic tissue. Okay. Now, the first important step for sex determination is actually a gene that we call the sex determining gene. Okay. So this is actually coming from the Y chromosome. So this is from the male, from the father, the, the sperm, if it has a genetic sex of a Y chromosome, that gene would then turn on at about four or five weeks. And some of the, the cells or somatic cells in those undifferentiated gonads are going to first go through the first step of differentiate, differentiation. And what this group of cells will become in the male sex is going to become what we call Sertoli cells. Okay, Sertoli cells. So these are just a group of cells scattered through those um, undifferentiated gonads, turned on by the SRY gene, and they're going to differentiate into the Sertoli cells. If that gene wasn't activated, then the cells would actually become a follicular-like cells, which is a supportive cell for the developing oogonia. Now, what the Sertoli cells will do is they're going to produce a couple of things. One of the first important hormones that they'll, or um, factors that they will produce is what we call an anti-malarian hormone, or sometimes it's called anti-malarian factor. Okay, we'll call it hormone just for today. And so what that will do is it will signal to go to the malarian ducts and cause them to gener degenerate. So they'll actually start to degenerate off, okay? I'm not gonna do this on the, this side because what I'll do is I'll use this side to develop, to go down a female sex line, whereas this side I'll go down the male sex line. But it's important to know that this is obviously happening on both sides. So the Sertoli cells, first important step from the SRY gene becomes Sertoli cells differentiation. AMH is produced, starts to degenerate that ductal system. Another thing that it will produce is a androgen binding protein, which is important for the binding of testosterone, which we'll get to in shortly. 
and it will start to signal to those germal cells, which we saw the primordial germ cells, to now go down a line of spermatogonia-like function. If this wasn't in case, then it would go down an oogonia line. So now what's starting to happen is another group of cells in that cluster of cells in that circle like structure is another group is going to come out i'll just get another pen which we call i'll pull it down here the leydig cells okay now what turns that on is actually from the mother's placenta called hcg so hcg is released this is the same hormone that actually tells the mother or tells the positive um, pregnancy so this is coming from the placenta this is going to these somatic cells that haven't differentiated in the Sertoli cells and they become Leydig cells. Now what they'll do, what the Leydig cells will start to do is they'll produce testosterone. Okay, so what testosterone will do now is actually select for the Wolfian duct. So the Wolfian duct will actually not degenerate but actually proliferate so it becomes much more defined. So what we're going to do is actually select for the Wolfian duct and from the Sertoli cells, we have it canceling out from the anti-malarian hormone, which will get rid of the malarian duct. All right, so that's what, what's basically taking place. Now, the testosterone will um, act on the antigen binding pro and androgen binding protein, which is going to also support those spermatogonia cells. Now, how this will progress, so we're going to go down this line now to look at how all these structures differed. So the gonad with all these effects that we went through is going to become like a testy-like um, phenotype. Now the, the Wolfian duct system, which we can see now, becomes more like we're used to in the adult kind of form in the anatomy. So when we look here, we can see at the top part, which was here, that becomes the epididymis. All this other structure becomes the vas deferens. And then we come closer to the urogenital sinus now. And there's probably a combination of the effect of testosterone and the developing uh, other androgens is going to change a ductal system into the seminal vesicle. Okay. Now, one thing that testosterone will also do is there's, um, it, can, it can change from testosterone into a more potent form of an androgen called dihydrotestosterone. And this is done through an enzyme called 5-alpha reductase. And that particular one becomes important when we do the external genitalia development. But what it will do in this case is it will go to the urogenital sinus, as we can see here, and start to develop the prostate and the penile urethra. Okay. Now, if there was an issue with the testosterone going into DHT, and that's the 5-alpha reductase, so I'll just put 5-alpha here, that's the enzyme. In some cases, there can be a dysfunction in this hormone, okay? So if that hormone, sorry, that enzyme, if that enzyme doesn't work, the DHT doesn't become made, and so we can have some dysfunction in this production. Now, that's important, especially when we do the external genitalia, which is on the side of the whiteboard. All right, now, what, what was the remnants of that malarian duct? Well, you can see a little bit left, we, down here in the testes, we've got what we call the appendix testes, and we've also got a little bit there in the developing prostate, which we call the utricle. Okay, so that's the last remnants of that malarian duct. Now, how does the testes get down there? Well, because it's up here in the abdomen, it actually has two bits of tissue or ligaments that are both cordial and cranial. Now, with the effect of testosterone, and a hormone called insulin-like growth factor, that will get rid of this ligament at the top. But this ligament is actually all the way down here. And what it will do is it will pull the testes down. So it will start to descend downwards. And that ligament is what we call the gubernaculum. And that's going to pull the testes downwards and come down through the abdomen, which is a trans-abdominal migration. And then it gets to an area we call the inguinal canal. And then it will pull it through there like so. Now, if there is a, an issue with testosterone signaling, so sometimes there are enzymes that produce testosterone as well. And if that is absent, so if testosterone is absent, so if it's a genetic male, but the way that testosterone is made in the Leydig cells, if that is dysfunctional through some enzymatical steps, 
what will happen is there's no testosterone released. So what will eventuate will, we still have a degeneration of that malarian duct, so that will disappear. But this wolfian duct doesn't really develop as strongly. So there's going to be problems with that ductal system developing. Okay, but also the testes won't descend down because testosterone is very important for the descension of the testes. So sometimes it will remain in the abdomen, which if it does, and this is called crypto orchidism, if it remains in the abdomen, that then may result in um, the testes staying behind the abdomen, which means it's too hot. And that means spermatogenesis doesn't occur. And that will essentially make the, the male potentially sterile. All right, so that's the male sex determination. Let's go across to the female sex determination. So basically, the way you should remember the female is it's the absence of all that stuff. So by default, if it doesn't have the SRY gene, it doesn't have testosterone, if it doesn't have anti-malarian hormone, it by default will just go down a phenotype sex determination of female, okay? So this is really what's gonna happen. So in the female, the undifferentiated gonad, because we don't have the SRY gene turned on, we don't have the Sertoli cell, which means we don't have anti-malarian hormone, which means that there's nothing to turn that ductal system off. So that means it will proceed as normal. So that will actually continue to develop. Now, because we don't have the differentiation through the Sertoli cells into the other Leydig cells with the help of HCG, that means there's no testosterone and that means there's nothing to hold the Wolfian duct in place. So that means the Wolfian duct will degenerate, okay? So what's left is essentially just the malarian duct and what will happen to the germal cells in here because there's no differentiating to Sertoli cells, those somatic cells around the germal cells will just become follicular or fecal-like cells to support those germal cells which will become um, oocytes, so they're going to become um, egg producing cells. So this ovary cell, well this, this gonad will then become an ovary. And so let's have a look at how it will progress during the fetal period. The same thing happens with the ligaments, so the ovary has to also go down, but we don't lose the cranial ligament like we saw in the testes, it actually remains there. So we actually have that cranial ligament stay behind, and that's going to be the suspensory ligament of the ovary. And then in terms of the caudal ligament, which was the gubernaculum in the male, that's going to stay in situ as well, which is going to be the round ligament, going from the ovary across to the uterus, but there's also another one that goes down um, which would have been that one that pulls down into the scrotum and that's going to go down towards the inguinal canal and then kind of incorporate into the labia majora. Now the, the way that the malarian duct starts to form is up the top here will make the frimbrae around the ovary and then the ampulla and the remaining part will be essentially the fallopian tube and as we get close to the urogenital sinus we're going to develop into the uterus and the upper part of the vagina. The urogenital sinus will actually come from the other side of the board when we do the external genitalia, which will create the lower vagina. Now, in terms of potential abnormalities that could go awry with the development of the female sex, the main one just to be, to be mindful of is that um, when the adrenal gland is developing, um, in the adrenal gland, we also produce steroids. So we produce aldosterone and cortisol and, and the androgens. Um, what could go wrong is there sometimes there is a enzyme that can become dysfunctional there, which means the aldosterone is not made, which means the cortisol is not made. And then the way that that, that uh, proceeds is that there's no cortisol to go back to the hypothalamus to turn off that production of steroids. So what actually happens is all the steroids shift down into androgens. Okay, so androgens are being produced at high levels from the adrenal gland and starts to get spilled over into the blood. And what that means is that the female, and this is what we call adrenal, uh, congenital adrenal hyperplasia. So what essentially happens in utero is there's high amounts of androgens androgens being produced, such as DHEA, okay, so that's a 
Now what will happen there is the DH will come down and act here. Now this, the, the genital tract formation is independent of androgens, but the way that the uh, external genitalia form in the female will be heavily influenced by the high levels of androgens, which will then make the, the genitalia of the female at birth potentially ambiguous, slightly larger, so a larger clitoris, etc. And so that's the main um, potential problem that could go wrong or the most common potential issue that could go wrong in the development of the female phenotype sex. So what we're going to do now is go across, so this is the ductal system, so what we're going to do is go across to the other, now coming to the external genitalia, at seven weeks, basically this is going to be at the uh, end of the cloaca, so this is the surface membrane of the cloaca, which we call the proctodeum. That starts to break down and what we're left with is a whole group of mesenchymal tissue or mesodermal tissue, and now there's three kind of clusters or different areas of tissue that you should be aware of. There's the, the front part here, which is the genital tubicle. There's that continuation of the urogenital sinus, which we saw on the other side of the board, which I had it in red. So that's the opening and that's so the ductal systems will drain into this purple tube. And then outside that, we have the genital swelling. Now with the fact, so at this point in time, this has not differentiated into any biological sex. Now with the effect of testosterone that's released from the Leydig cells, and remember that gets converted into DHT by 5-alpha reductase enzyme, what that effect will have is it will start to change the morphology of that tissue. So the genital tubule will become um, larger and that's going to be the precursor for the gland's penis. The, out part, the outer green part will be the scrotal swelling, which is where the testes will descend into. And then here the urogenital sinus or the genital folds will start to come together. As they're coming together though, it will help to form and canalulize to make into a long tube, the penile urethra, and then slowly that will close shut. So by the end of the late fetal period, we can see the closure of that, that fold we're left with a raphi along the scrotum and the penis, and the only opening there is the external urethral orifice. Now, if there is some dysfunction with the enzyme that produces DHT, which is the 5-alpha reductase, there could be a, a difference in the way that that develops. So it could be more feminized, so the genitalia could be more female-like, so ambiguous in that sense, or we might see a lack of closure in those genital folds, which will re result in something called hyperspadius, and a approximately half to 1% one, to 1 of births, male births, will result in that um, congenital issue. Now let's look down the female um, differentiation, differentiation line. Um, what happens in the, the differentiation of the female sex, we don't have the DHT or testosterone, so that won't have an effect. But the, probably the most profound is going to be the estrogen. So what estrogen will do is it will have an effect on the genital tubicle, which then causes to kind of shrink in size and envelop inwards, and that's going to become the clitoris. The genital folds will start to come together and the outer tissue of that will be, become the labia minora. As we can see as we, in the later fetal development, we can see that that actually has segmented into one tube that is going to be the external urethra and the other one is going to be the vagina. Outside that is the labia minora and then outside that which was the genital swelling which is a homologue to the scrotum is going to be the labia majora and that's going to be the last part um, of that caudal ligament that we saw that pulls the testes down, which is part of the round ligament, whereas in there we'll have the gubernaculum. And this is where on the, la on, the, uh, on the other side I spoke about the androgens. So if there's high amounts of androgens in the female development from that congenital uh, uh, adrenal dysplasia, this can have a profound effect on the development of this which may shift it slightly more masculine-like, so the clitoris could be enlarged. And even though it's um, the genital tracts are female, the external genitalia are the ones that have the greatest effect with this particular uh, adrenal cortex deficiency.